Suburban Sentinel here with a firearms policy related video. I routinely review information from the anti-gun lobby, not because I agree with them, of course. Uh, it all comes down to know thy enemy. And one, I want to see what they're putting out to the public and to the, our politicians. And two, it's important, at least I believe it's important that we know how they think. One of the biggest anti-gun organizations is the Brady Center. The Brady Center is named after James Brady, who was Ronald Reagan's press secretary, who was shot and seriously injured in the Reagan assassination attempt in 1981. And on the screen here is their homepage. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit on this. They have some they have crazy things here. They have a, a little statistical gauge here showing the number of people allegedly shot today and the number of shot this year in America. And all oh, nicey nice. Anyway, uh, I was reviewing uh, some of their blog materials. And I came across an article uh, written by Dennis Hennigan. Uh, Mr. Hennigan is the vice president of the Brady Campaign Organization and a staunch gun control advocate. This article or blog post is entitled, How About If We Hold Congress in contempt. It was published on June 18th, 2012, and I'll put up the annotation as a reference. Anyway, uh, Mr. Hennigan is complaining about the Republican response to the Fast and Furious scandal now playing out in the U.S. Congress. For those of you unfamiliar with the Fast and Furious program, this was a Justice Department project designed to go after hardcore Mexican drug criminals. Justice enlisted the help of legitimate American gun dealers for this operation. The plan was to use the licensed gun dealers in America to sell firearms to illegal straw buyers, knowing that some of the guns would eventually end up in the hands of the Mexican criminal cartels. Law enforcement authorities would then track and trace the guns to the cartels, and that would help in prosecuting the bad guys. This type of operation is commonly referred to as gun walking. However, this particular plan went sideways because the U.S. government either could not, would not, or did not track all of the weapons. Some of these guns ended up at the murder scenes of innocent people, including an American Border Patrol agent. Mr. Hennigan decries the fact that Republican lawmakers are pouncing on the Democratic Attorney General. Hennigan asserts that the Fast and Furious guns, or those that the ATF allowed to walk across the border, were less than 3% of the number of guns used by criminals in Mexico that were traced back to the U.S. within a five-year period. Hennigan finds the Republicans' behavior contemptuous in that the GOP lawmakers are only concerned about that small percentage of fast and furious guns rather than the remaining 97% of the guns recovered. But even if Hennigan has the facts straight, which seems rather doubtful, he is off base. We know that the guns from the U.S. got into the hands of the Mexican crime syndicates. We know that some of these guns were used to kill innocent people, including a U.S. law enforcement officer in the United States. However, the biggest issue in the Fast and Furious hearings is that the United States government was an accomplice. When a serial arsonist burns down building after building in a city, that's big news. When that serial arsonist turns out to be the fire chief, that is a scandal. Chastising lawmakers for focusing on the most important issue about the gun walking program 
is just plain silly. Also, Mr. Hennigan blames the U.S. Congress for the fast and furious mess. He argues that because American gun laws are so weak, the Congress created an environment that resulted in the flawed gun walking strategy. So let me get this straight, Mr. Harrigan. Hannigan, sorry. We here in the U.S. have laws prohibiting the sale of guns to straw buyers. The gun dealers violated the law at the government's behest as part of the Justice Department's gun walking operation. So Congress should be on the hook as an enabler for condoning ineffective laws that had to be broken to support the enforcement action. You know, I'm certainly not a fan of our legislature, but pinning the Fast and Furious scandal on our Congress is really just misplacing the blame. But Mr. Hennigan goes further. He also condemns the legislature for failing to take action at the Mexican government's request to restrict our gun laws. Two years ago, Mexican President Calderon addressed the U.S. Congress and stated that Mexican criminals were taking advantage of weak U.S. gun laws to amass large quantities of weapons. Hennigan complains that Congress did nothing to further restrict the sale of arms despite President Calderon's pleas to the Congress. Well, let's wait a second. The reason these Mexican drug cartels are so powerful is because of the United States. If our citizens didn't buy narcotics coming from or through Mexico, these giant drug cartels would probably just shrivel up and die off. So we would have no more drugs in the U.S. and the gun problem in Mexico would vanish too. Using Mr. Hennigan's logic, the country of origin is responsible for illicit purchases that cross international borders. So the American narcotics problem is Mexico's responsibility. All we need to do is send our president south of the border to tell Mexico not to allow its citizens to export drugs to the U.S. anymore. Because our president will be there anyway, he can just also tell the Mexican government to stop letting its people cross into the U.S. illegally. And that would solve yet another problem in one single trip. So why is any of this important? Certainly, I recognize the Brady campaign and Mr. Hennigan's right to their opinion. Certainly, reasonable and rational people can have good faith disputes about policy. However, this article, along with much of the other material offered by the Brady campaign, is completely irrational. So you may say, so what? It's irrational. Live and let live. The problem is some of these politicians listen to these people. Certainly any politician who either courts, references, or relies upon the Brady campaign needs to know about any factual inaccuracies that are put forth in its information. More importantly, those same politicians need to know that the Brady campaign's positions are illogical, irrational, not worthy of serious consideration. The old adage is, know thy enemy. Now, I really don't consider gun control advocates enemies. I consider them more unenlightened. We just need to make sure that our politicians know that as well to protect our Second Amendment rights. This is the Suburban Sentinel. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Shoot safely, everybody.